This guy puts the deception in Decepticon. Here's your look at the brand new 3-0 Transformers MDLX Starscream. Three Zero is proud to announce the newest character in the MDLX series, Starscream, the treacherous Decepticon Air Commander and leader of the Seekers. MDLX Starscream stands approximately 7.8 inches tall to the top of his wings and is equipped with Three Zero's signature die-cast zinc alloy and engineering-grade plastics eternal frame system with over 50 points of articulation. Accessories include two interchangeable faces, one detachable back wing system, two detachable null ray cannons, two detachable Three Zero originally designed blades, and four pairs of interchangeable hands. Judging by his face, you can tell he wants Megatron's place. Before, of course, we get a closer look at the brand new MDLX Transformers Decepticon Seeker Leader Starscream. I'd like to thank the folks over at 3.0 that did provide this sample we could have a look at. Starscream stands at about 7 inches in height, or the figure is going to be about 17 and a half centimeters tall. The MDLX line is actually one of my favorite things that 3.0 are putting out. Having already looked at a course, speaking of Megatron and all, here's what Starscream looks like with Megs. Now, I will say about Megatron's size when you compare him with Starscream, now looking at Starscream next to him, I think the Decepticon leader should have really been rightfully taller, or they should have made Starscream a little bit smaller. They seem to be going a different approach when it comes to actually the deco of these figures. I mean, we also had a look at Hot Rod or Rodimus Prime not too long ago as well. And you can see like Starscream and Hot Rod have a similarly shared sort of panel lining to them that wasn't found presently on Megatron. Other figures we've also looked at in the past, speaking of leaders, here's what he looks like with the Autobot leader Optimus Prime. We'll also be bringing back Optimus Prime in a second because you can also do the disguised Starscream posing as Optimus Prime. And there's also what he looks like with the smallest of the MDLX figures next to Bumblebee. I would say a good bunch of accessories come in clue with Starscream. First, the figure comes in clue with this wing pack. Instead of actually having the figure built with this already on the back of the figure's body, what they've done instead is they've put pegs on the back here that literally then just plug on the back of Starscream. It has some nice printed Decepticon logos there on the sides, some nice additional red striping, and the striping continues its way then into the middle section where they colored it that same sort of crimson red. I also like the additional silver and gold that they've added in there as well. It's a really nice looking wing attached piece, and again, Again, it's just going to clip on the back of Starscream's body. If you actually take the figure right now, spin him around to the back, you'll notice similarly sized shapes on the back of his torso. Just take the wing pack and that just fits in place. And one thing that's actually rather interesting, we'll talk more about when we bring in back Optimus Prime, is again, you can take that wing pack and fit it on the back of Optimus Prime's body as well. Now, the figure also comes in clue with his null ray cannons. Funny though, the null ray cannons on the ends of them at least look more like screwdrivers. They're molded here this time and actually kind of a, not black, but rather kind of a very, very dark, dark gray. And these can be attached actually in either one of his hands, or you can also attach them onto his shoulders. One thing I do like about the shoulders is if you look at the figure again, these slots on the side are a lot deeper than probably what you would imagine. So you can actually take the handle ends of these and slide them all the way in there. And you have the null ray cans then attached onto the sides of his shoulders. What you can also do too is take these off. Sometimes they get a little hung up when you're trying to remove them back from his shoulders. He also comes in clear with a couple of hands. These ripping hands as well, you can use the null ray cannons and use them as actually hand lasers instead. And that's just, again, in popping off the hands from the forearms. In fact, actually, you know what, let's do that right now. Just take one of the hands and remove it from the provided peg. Take, again, appropriately the right hand, just plug that in place, and then take your null ray cannon. And like I said, that just fits in between his grip. Sometimes these are a little harder to fit in between his hands. In sometimes the process of doing that, I also pop off the peg. But you can also get the figure to be holding this as well. The only downside is sometimes, as you already saw, the wing pack does come off frequently just because, like, while the null ray cannons have quite a deepness to go in there, these actually aren't very uh, deep at all, or these aren't long enough pegs. So fitting them onto the back of the figure's body, moving the figure around, yeah, these do come off frequently. So we're just going to put that back in place. But I do like the idea that you can take the null ray cannons I mean, preferred, I would rather just have them displayed attached on the sides of his shoulders, but you can also fit them in his hands as well. So let's just take those null ray cannons, fit them in on the one side, and we'll do the exact same thing on the other side as well. And again, it just fits into that open 
little open chasm there. Plug these in place. And now Starscream has his null ray cannons and his wings. The wings we're not done with yet. The figure also comes included with these wing blades. These blades are also something that he can wield in his hands. It's just a case of fitting these into his existing hands. But what you can also do too, you know what I'll do is I'll remove this first. Because I want to show you where they slot in place. These sections right here, they're a little thinner of a wing. What you'll do is you'll take these and there's a slot on the side here that basically just line up parallel or almost parallel. And he gets some extra little blades that he can go on the ends of his wings with. Looking at it the way that they, it is right now, it looks almost like a goblin glider from Green Goblin. And again, you just got these extra little blades. It does actually give him a little more detailing when, again, you attach this on the back of the figure's body. It gives him these extra little side pieces of his wings and just gives him a little bit more to look at. Uh, also for the figure's hands, the figure also comes included with a couple of gripping hands. Now he has this one already right here. We've already popped that one off. He also has this one that would just, again, plug in place on that side. The figure also has a couple of dynamic hands. Molded very nicely also in a blue. I really like the choice of blue that they decided to go with. While really the colors are kind of very more toned down, especially with the whites, they're more like a lighter gray. The blues are the one thing that actually still manages to be bright on this figure. So he comes with a couple of dynamic hands and he also comes included with a little pair, well, a pair of slightly relaxed hands. And again, those just pub plug off from his existing pegs on his forearms. The figure also comes included with an alternate faceplate. The faceplate, if hopefully you guys can see, if the camera's going to focus in, gives us a Starscream with a slightly smirking face. I don't know about you, but whenever I think of Starscream, I think of someone that's always plotting behind the scenes. If you didn't want to change this head sculpt off, I already know the wings are going to fall off, so I'm going to take those off first. What you'll do is, here's the existing head as it is right now. It is a smiling face, but it doesn't have the corner smirk. If you did want to change the face, it's just a case of popping the, or moving the head at least on an angle and then getting your thumb in there and just pulling it off. All you really have to do is it sits. Let me just show you. There's a little lip of plastic right there that basically fits inside the top of his helmet. And then the front of the, or the back of the little face there, see there's a square open peg that just plugs into like this little slot of plastic right there. So what you'll then do is just take the, you know, again, the swapped out face, put it sort of more on an angle and then plug it in place. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll bring in the other face so you guys can see the difference between the two and try my best not to drop them. This is what we started with. This is what we get now. It's just, again, it's a very similar face. It just has a slight smirk. Can you see it on that side? A little smirk on the corner of his mouth. I prefer, again, this face really of the two. So that's all of Starscream. Now, I did say that this figure could be then changed out with component pieces for Optimus Prime. Now, he does pose as Optimus Prime. So what you can actually do, though, is that you can take your Prime. I won't put the wings on just yet because that's, again, one thing that's going to fall off. But see these little pegs we already looked at on the back? Optimus Prime had a section for his jet pack, and they made it in such a way that you could take the wing pack for Starscream. And that just fits in place. Although I had a harder time to get it on Optimus Prime, but you can get Optimus Prime than having the wing set there for Starscream. But you can also do the same thing of taking it with his head sculpt. Remove the head from Starscream. Remove the head from Optimus Prime. Let's just take the wings back off here to do that. Remove the head for Optimus Prime. And sometimes while doing this with Optimus Prime, I've noticed his neck comes off as well. Just going to detach that. And basically, we just put Starscream. The peg, the ball joint, has stayed behind, so that kind of doesn't really help. But you're going to take Starscream's head, and you're going to put that on top of uh, Optimus Prime's body. And essentially, you'll get yourself uh, Starscream posing as Optimus Prime. It just, again, involves me having to remove the peg, but basically will plug in the exact same way. I like that. I, I don't, can't, I can't see myself ever really having a Starscream displayed as Optimus Prime, really. But the fact that they, they thought that far ahead by giving us the means to attach the wings on the back of Optimus Prime and also then swapping out Starscream's head, I think was also fun on, on Three Zero's part. So let's just put Prime to the side. We'll remove, of course, Starscream, put his head back in place there. There we go. Make sure it's completely on there. And you know what, while we're also at it, I, I think what I might just do right now is I'll leave the wing off for at least for the second so I can show you guys what the sculpting looks like on the back of the figure's body. I mean, this normally wouldn't be the way that you'd be looking at Starscream. You'd be looking at him with his wings, but it also gives me, again, a chance to show you guys. Again, this approach of Starscream is very similar to the approach that they did with Rodimus Prime in the sense that, like, if we looked at Optimus Prime, I'm just going to bring him back in for a second. He doesn't have, first of all, that matte finish that we got with both Rodimus and Starscream. See the difference really between the two? Starscream also has a lot more notable panel lining all across his body. Original Optimus Prime didn't have it. 
And let's just reach off to the side and bring back in Megatron. Megatron also, even though Megatron was a more newer released figure, didn't also have that kind of panel lining that we get now with Starscream. So it seems like they really have changed the direction of what they want to do with the MDLX figures. I kind of really like more of the panel lining there on the newer figures like Starscream and Rodimus Prime. Let's go ahead and take his wing set and put it back on the figure's body here. Again, the only thing I would say about the wings is just for the frequency of rotating the figure, changing the posability, and there's a lot of posability on, on Starscream here, I just find like the wing set is always the one thing that always falls off frequently on the figure. So I just wish that this was just a little bit longer so it fit more attached properly on the back of the figure's body. Other than that, though, really like the look, though, of Starscream. Nice de detailed. One thing I noticed with Starscream here, looking at him, it kind of reminded me of the original uh, the original masterpiece Starscream, which I did have in my collection. I ended up selling it off. That original Starscream actually had not quite a gray motif, but it had kind of more of a lighter green color scheme. It was back in the day that they didn't really want to have, I guess they weren't really necessarily wanting to make them look like cartoon accurate. Since then, though, all the masterpiece figures have kind of had more of a generation one motif, but kind of just like the way the panel lining works here on, on Starscream's body in his thighs, obviously in the front of his chest there, really resonates like the older days of the Masterpiece line. Now again, his head sculpt is fantastic. If you prefer the smirk there in the corner of his face, this one definitely does deliver. And a much more boxier looking head sculpt, very much classic looking Starscream the way they've designed this. Of course, they've got some nice additional panel lining uh, all across the figure's body. Nothing, nothing really necessarily stands out in the sense that there is black lining that they've definitely filled in the crevice, crevices. So it looks like they have like painted and wiped away it. So some of the obviously the little panel recessed areas have still the black lining, but it doesn't look too black where it looks messy. Sometimes when you panel line things too much, it ends up making the figure look way too heavily detailed. Figure does certainly have a lot of detail to him, but to the point where I feel like it's not too much. It's not too much the extreme. He does have the thrusters there on the back of the figure's legs, larger thrusters down below. I mean, obviously these MDLX figures don't transform. So I, hopefully that wouldn't be a deal breaker for you guys. Cause if I know some people would really like to have their transformers transform, I, for me, I would really rather just have these guys displayed on the shelf in just really cool looking poses. You definitely can do that here with star screen. Now for his articulation, the thing about the figure, again, is I'm just going to be worrisome that his wing is going to fall off, but the figure does have a ball joint, so the head does rotate all the way around. It does look up, it does look down, and it does move back and forth. But in addition to that, all of these figures so far seem to have had a secondary ball joint at the base of the neck, so you can rotate the neck also the same way that we were moving the head, up, down, back, and forth. And technically, yeah, you could rotate the neck also as well, all the way around. Now, the figure does also have a swivel in his waist. Swiveling, though, the waist will result in, like, some of the skirting, for example, getting caught up here with the wings. So when you're doing it, just be careful. Like, again, like these little pieces, I'm just going to move this one. Th these little pieces at least only attach by the pegs. But you look at the way that the pegs are designed, they're very, there's something very easily could be broken if you're not too careful. Again, that just plugs onto the peg. I noticed there's something similar also when we looked at Rodimus Prime. His little side skirts were also very prone to popping off. So just be careful of that when you're rotating the figure back and forth. You don't want to clip these because the moment you clip them, yeah, they're going to pop off. The figure does have a torso crunch. And I love the way they've actually made the crunch in a way that it looks like it's part of the cockpit. So if we just bring the body back up here, for example, they've put a line right here dividing the top part of the gold cockpit from the lower half of the gold cockpit. But they put it in such a place that it hides really nicely the crunch on the figure's body. Uh, the figure's shoulders do rotate all the way around. Let's just take this off here for a second. The figure's arms do rotate all the way around. It'd be a lot easier to do that, obviously, without his wings. The arms also hinge outward also as well. Now, you can also drop these shoulders too. You can bring them down a little bit further, or you can, if you prefer, have Starscream with slightly higher shoulders. That can also be accommodated as well. Just, again, be careful of these, because they're also, again, just very something that's very frequently popping off of the figure. Then we just pop it back into place. figure does have a swivel in his bicep. Vigor has a double hinge on his elbow, so you can get a, a complete bend all the way on his arm, and the hands do rotate all the way around, whatever hands you want to display with the figure. Again, you got that swivel right here on the waist. All of these individual skirt pieces do have hinges. They're all on ball joints, actually, so there's a ball joint attaching each one of these attached to the body. He also has it on the back there also as well. Bringing the legs out is also one thing that you will want to bring these skirts out for. Just hinge them out so you can easily then split the legs on Starscream. And he can do a full splits, really, too. The figure has a swivel at the top of his thigh. Again, the legs can move forward and back. 
Um, he also has a double hinge on his knee. So not only does it hinge like right here, for example, but he also has a secondary hinge at the back of the leg. So you can get a 90 degree angle bend on his leg. And then he also has an ankle pivot. I know we really didn't spend a whole lot of time looking at Starscream's very rather large feet. It's the only thing I really am, a, am not a big fan of. I wish they actually could have made the feet completely flat by giving him sort of these, they almost look like bird talons. Did you just say talons? I did say talons. They kind of look like an eagle's talons rather than actually robot feet. I wish personally that they would have made these flat. That's just my own personal opinion, but there's quite a lot of ankle pivots. So you can move these back and forth. You can also hinge these up and down as well. Yeah, Starscream has quite a lot of posability. So if you did want to get them in some really interesting poses, the only thing, again, I would certainly suggest... If you are looking to get this guy in a pose, just be mindful of where the skirting is at all times. Because again, like like really the case when we looked at, say, Rodimus Prime. Rodimus Prime had this, Optimus Prime has had it. Really, all of the figures have had some way, shape, or form skirting on the on the lower half of their bodies. Or basically like right, right around the waist area. That's the one thing that you just want to always be weary of when it comes to putting these guys in interesting poses. They have the means. They have the po posability options available. But just when you're moving those things around, like his lower legs for example you just want to make sure that you're not clipping these skirts and breaking them off because that's the last thing you certainly would want starscream though looks fantastic we are getting another version of this guy i think we're getting him as skywarp i'm sure we're also going to be getting him as a thundercracker at some point and maybe you never know we might even get ourselves a ghost of starscream now that they've got the building block and the blueprint down for the seekers leader starscream the sky's the limit, no pun intended, for what 3.0 could do with future releases using this existing mold. Seeker leader Starscream is slated to release the first quarter of 2024 for $119.99 on various online sites. Funny enough, though, the backpack that he has on his torso might equate for the additional cost of what this guy is going for because the Rodimus Prime, the Megatron, and Optimus Prime that we already had a look at goes still for $79.99 on those same still sites. So Starscream is going to be a little bit more expensive. He's also going to be used again I was looking online. There's going to be a Skywarp version using the same body. He's also going to be going for 119, and he's going to get released the second quarter of 2024. So Starscream is the first quarter of 2024. Skywarp, the follow-up seeker, is getting released the second quarter of the same year. I like the look of Starscream. Now, I've got the figure displayed currently with one of his wing blades detached from the back wing set. You can wield it in his hand. Although I don't think it looks as good a, as a blade. It actually comes across more like a laser gun. Speaking of laser guns, one thing I do like is that the Null Ray cannons can be detached from their normal place on seeker shoulders rather you can actually have the figures also wielding them as laser guns i think that they might be a little bit too long when it comes to laser guns but they certainly fit the proper length when it comes to something that he can mount on his shoulders the only thing i would say though about the figure while loving from him from head to toe mostly is i do wish that the backpack that has the wings could have actually had longer pegs just because again any bit of rotating the figure around, I think it's the one thing on the figure short of the side skirts that fall off frequently on him. Other than maybe just making those pegs a tad bit longer, a nice looking Starscream, like I said, from head to toe. What do you guys think of MDLX Starscream? Is this a figure you guys could see yourselves picking up? And have you been collecting any of the 3-0 Transformers MDLX figures? If you have, let me know down below in the comments section which ones you've gotten. 3-0 have also done variations of some of those figures too. So like some of the site exclusives, I think there's a big bad store, store exclusive Megatron that's going to have the Generation 2 yeah, uh, green color scheme. I'm almost even tempted to try to track that one down. I really like the mold of the original Megatron. I don't know. I might pull the trigger on that one. But have you guys been collecting any of these? Let me know down below in the comments section. In the meantime, though, I'd like to big, send a big thank you once again to the folks over at 3.0 that did provide the sample of the brand new MDLX Star Screen that we could have a look at in this review. If you guys did enjoy this video, I want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you'd like to see some more, we may not be looking at 3.0 just yet, but if you still need your fix for the company, you can also pop up, popping up at the very end of the video that you can also check out, is a playlist covering all the territory of anything I've done for 3.0. That includes the larger DLX Transformers, and it also includes the smaller scale MDLX figures, all of the ones that we did bring in for comparison's sake. I've done reviews on all of those if you guys want to go back and have a look at those. But yes, hit that subscribe button down below. Yes, turn on the bell notification. But yes, make sure you're coming back here on a regular basis because there's always new content showing up here on this channel. As always, guys, thanks, thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.